the account applies to the new New Haven. Thanks, Jack. Um, I need notes. I'm not as polished as these other guys yet. Um, we played St. Anselm's College last Friday night. It was wet, sloppy, um, kind of night that you need your defense to kind of step up. We had uh, an excellent effort from our senior middle linebacker, Matt Zarico, and our free safety captain, uh, Chris Carroll. He had two interceptions, uh, which again kind of led a, a defensive effort that resulted in St. A's having only seven first downs. We held them to minus 34 yards rushing, which again was a heck of an effort by our defense. Uh, you guys know that on a, a sloppy night like that, field position is everything. And uh, we were able to benefit from a defensive effort that uh, kept the ball basically in our end of the field most of the night. Uh, our offense, <coughs> they were good enough to win. They weren't spectacular. Uh, it just, again, uh, ball security on a wet night like that is everything. We had four fumbles. Something we have to improve on dramatically. It was a goal going into this year. We had a lot of turnovers last year, so I'm disappointed that we couldn't hang on to the ball better. But we scored when we had to, and we got out of there with a 24 zip win, which is a, was a hard fought again win, primarily by our defense. I thought they did an excellent job. University of New Haven, uh, they've dropped football five years ago. Uh, this is their first year back uh, in New England. Um, it's their first home game. And we expect a, a heck of a crowd on, uh, on Saturday. It's a blue field. They're making a whole big deal about this blue field. Uh, they have a huge crowd anticipated. They have a quarterback who's a transfer from Louisville. They have a wide receiver who is a 4-4-40 guy who leads our conference in receptions and receiving yards and all-purpose yards. And I think he's second in the league in kick return and punt return. So we obviously know who we have to target. Uh, they're a very prolific passing offense. It's going to be a challenge for our defense this week to, to step up and, and uh, take the ball out of their hands, which is something that we really need to do. We can't let them control the, the ball. So offensively, we're going to do what we've been trying to do the last three weeks, control the football, run the ball. We did have 227 yards rushing last Friday night. It's the highest total we've had in, I think, four years, Dick. So uh, we're on the right track with getting a more balanced offense in place, and it's resulted in a, a good start for us. I think Saturday's going to be a, a heck of a challenge. And uh, I expect that uh, it's going to be a great football game and a good atmosphere down in New Haven. Um, excellent effort, young man. Excellent game. And congratulations on the gold helmet. If you know anybody else from UConn who wants to transfer, please let me know. How do I get one of those? Um, and I'd like to uh, wish everyone in the room good luck this weekend. Thank you. The Skyhawk goes to war with the Warriors. Last week, Friday night, had our uh, only home game for the first month and a half of the season. We hosted AIC, uh, dropped a tough 35-17 decision to them. Real early on, fell behind 14-0. The team could have felt rolled over and uh, let it let the top team in the league kind of predicted uh, come in and uh, roll us over. The team really dug in, dug in, got a field goal before halftime, and then stopped AIC on their first try. The second half went down, and scored, made it 14-7. So all of a sudden, we have a ball game on our hands. Um, then the next series, a fumble return for a touchdown by uh, Clark Ledger out of Waltham. And we're up 17-14. And um, AIC certainly has what they weren't anticipating coming in on their hands. Unfortunately, the mistakes piled up. Uh, a couple of interceptions late. And um, AIC was able to score last three. Touchdowns. Um, some big keys for us so far this year. Uh, we're averaging 28.9 yards on kickoffs. Um, it's second best in the country right now. Uh, Stefan Neville out of Foxborough is averaging 40.6 yards on kickoff returns. Two straight weeks, he's had over 100 yards on kick returns, and he did it on two returns last week. And that's number two nationally, but just like a half yard. So he's really setting the tone for the offense, getting the short field. Now it's just a matter of cutting down the mistakes and um, capitalizing on that good field position. Um, defensively, we're leading the conference in sacks with 12. Andrew Lesko out of Northampton, Mass, leads the league with three and a half. He's been very physical. He caused the fumble, um, which was run back for the touchdown on Friday night. And um, he's, he's performed very well. Eddie Bashan out of Newton. He's uh, moved up to six all time at Stonehill and rushing with over 1,300 yards. Now this Friday night, another Friday night game, we had to Merrimack in North Andover. Um, 
at 7 o'clock. They're a very physical team, uh, picked third in the conference, and we're going to have our hands full. But we're hoping the home team in that series has only won one time in the series history, so hopefully that string will continue Friday night. So uh, congratulations to the Gold Helmet winners. Good luck to everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. The Colonel looks for number one. Thank you, Wilbury College. I don't know if there's anything to be gained from being 0-2, but I've been a coach for a long enough time. We stepped out of our comfort zone this year to play Bentley, had a great football game against them. And then Widener College came up from uh, north of Philadelphia to play us. We were on the uh, one foot line with six seconds to go uh, to win the game, we did not. So we are 0-2. Uh, it was a great football game. Uh, we drove the length of the field uh, with the last minute and a half. Got down, but uh, we stalled. Uh, learned a little bit about our quarterback and our offense. Uh, played a much better football game. But we are 0-2, uh, which is hard at Curry. They broke our 37-game winning streak. I'll just mention a couple of our players. Scott Driscoll, who is the uh, player of the year in the conference defensively, intercepted another pass, took it back for a touchdown and is uh, really an outstanding linebacker, one of the best players I've seen in all my years of coaching. And our punter, Matt Elskinis, uh, picked up this year where he left off. He's averaging over 42 yards punting. And Joe Freeman, who was hurt last year, our tailback, had an excellent day running and catching the football. We will be playing Westfield, opening up the uh, conference season against Westfield State, and hopefully we can get number one. We're on the road, uh, they're 2-0, and uh, they have to believe that there's blood in the water, but uh, we'll see what the Colonels can do. The mountain travels to Gallaudet. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations to the Golden Helmet winners, uh, RJ and Nathan. That's a heck of an honor. You worked very hard for it. You should be proud of it. Congratulations. <clears throat> Way to start. Well, I guess we should start right where we are. We're 0 and 2 right now. Uh, we started off with two difficult road games. Uh, you know, regional powerhouses. Uh, we went up and. We started off with Bridgewater State, and then we traveled up to Columbus State this week. Um, we get great effort in the game, again, uh, but as a young football team, the thing that we need to understand is pressure situations. Uh, and those pressure situations are the difference between winning and losing. And when you're predominantly starting freshmen and sophomores, that's the hardest thing for them to understand. We decided to defer. Uh, we kick the football off. Uh, we get a three and out stop. And they punt. We stall. They score, we come back, and we match that score at 7-7. Seven seven. Um, right before halftime, um, we come back and we, we have the game at 14-13, uh, freshman holdup. Ball goes through his hand on the extra point. Um, so it's 14-13, we kick off, and they run the football back. So we go into halftime, 21-13. Um, we get the ball in the second half to begin the second half. Uh, we drive all the way down the field to the seven-yard line. And we snap the ball on one when it should have been snapped on two. Take a six-yard loss there. We get the points. Uh, and that was 21 to 16. That was the end of our scoring. So we ended up losing the game 34 to 16. Um, this week, we start our new conference. Uh, for the first time ever, the Eastern Collegiate Football Conference. Uh, this will be our first game against Gallaudet coming up from Washington, D.C. Um, they're a remarkable story. They're a school for the hearing impaired and the deaf. Um, it's where the huddle was invented. So they're coming up, they're our first conference game, and they run triple option and they run it well. Um, and one of the challenges we have as a coaching staff is trying to prepare our young little brothers um, to understand assignment football and how important assignment football is when you face a triple option team. Um, so we're 0-2 right now. But there's some positives to our 0-2. Because I think when you're 0-2 and you're a young team, or a team that hasn't been a perennial powerhouse and hasn't traditionally won year in and year out, 0-2 can go different ways. People can feel sorry for themselves. People can decide that they don't want to play, or they can be angry and upset, and the right kind of upset. And that's where we are right now. We're upset because we're accountable, and we know that there's plays all around us to win these football games. So we're about to go on a roll. We've got a bag of rocks in Mustang City's looking to win that conference. We're not looking just to compete. So we're excited, we're making the right mistakes, and I think we're going to grow up pretty quickly. So I appreciate the opportunity again. Congratulations to the Golden Home.